This is everyone's favorite Mac Mini, the mid-2012 quad-core, and today we're going to be upgrading it to the max. Total AV is an award-winning antivirus suite that protects against malware and traditional viruses as well as phishing scams that are becoming more and more common across multiple platforms. Check out the link in the description below to get Total AV for just $19.99 per year. From 2012 until 2018, this was the most powerful Mac Mini you could buy. It's the mid-2012 quad-core Mac Mini, and like a lot of things that came out in 2012, they were great, and then Apple ruined them. In 2014, Apple updated the Mac Mini and removed quad-cores as an option. It was dual-core only, and it was a lot less powerful than this guy. So the Mac Mini was basically dead until it got revived in 2018 when they painted it gray and put in much much better processors. However, while the 6-core i5 and i7 versions of the current generation Mac Mini are very solid and perform very well, the base model comes with a quad-core i3, and it's pretty much no more powerful than this 8-year-old Mac Mini, and it costs $800. So today we're going to upgrade this mid-2012 Mac Mini to see if it's worth it. So the specs of this Mac Mini, this one has the 2.3 gigahertz quad-core i7, four gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte mechanical hard drive. So the Mac Mini used to take its processors directly from the MacBook Pro. The base model 2012 Mac Mini has the same processor as the 13 inch unibody MacBook Pro, and this 2.3 gigahertz i7 is the exact same processor that you would find in a 15 inch unibody and a 15 inch retina macbook pro from 2012 and that's one of the reasons why this thing was so popular you could get the same processors as a 2000 plus dollar retina macbook pro at a fraction of the cost given that you were willing to provide a screen keyboard and mouse fortunately the upgradability of the 15 inch unibody was also brought over in addition to its processors you can upgrade this thing to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and thanks to a handy dandy kit from iFixit, we can actually put dual hard drives in this. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. In today's video, we're gonna be upgrading this to install 16 gigabytes of RAM, as well as this one terabyte SSD in addition to the one terabyte hard drive that it already has. So with those upgrades, this should be a pretty solid machine. And the goal is to find out is this worth it? Is it worth it compared to a new Mac Mini? Is it worth it compared to a 15 inch unibody MacBook Pro? We're gonna find out. But first, let's do some upgrades. The first thing we'll do is twist off the bottom plate and remove the RAM that's immediately accessible. You don't even need a screwdriver for this part. Then there are three T6 screws that hold the fan in place. So we'll remove those and unplug the fan from the logic board. Next, there's one T6 screw that secures a shroud, and we can remove that and move on to the antenna plate. Four T8 screws hold this in place, so we'll remove those and take off the plate, but don't yank it out because we still have to disconnect it from the actual inside of the machine. Next, there are a few more connectors on the board, and we're ready to remove the logic board. Once we remove one T8 from the casing and one T6 standoff screw from the board, we can grab our iFixit Mac Mini Board Removey Tool, which slots conveniently in the two standoff holes. All you have to do is pull back on it firmly, and it'll dislodge the logic board enough that we can unplug the power connector and then remove the board from the chassis. Next, we can pull out the hard drive, which is not screwed in anymore, and remove one T6 screw for the power supply. To remove this from the case, we'll have to remove a retaining bracket and twist the power socket counter clockwise, and then pull the PSU straight out. It's refreshing to see an enclosed power supply in contrast to the many Macs with exposed traces that can be very dangerous. Next, we just have one more T6 screw, 
and we can remove the hard drive bracket. With that out, you can see that the default drive sits on top with empty space down below. That's where our new drive is gonna live. The iFixit dual drive kit comes with rubber grommets that we'll install before bending the second hard drive cable to fit in the case. We'll install mounting screws in the SSD and install that into the bracket. There's a lot of disassembly and we'll have to follow all of those steps in reverse order to put the whole machine back together. Fortunately, there are two hard drive connectors on the board, so all of the modifications have been done already and all we have to do is reassemble it exactly the same way that we disassembled it. So now I've got the Mac Mini fully reassembled, and before we go into it, I want to talk briefly about today's video sponsor, Total AV. Traditional malware, as we commonly think about it, isn't the main form of cybercrime anymore. Phishing scams are becoming more and more common. Phishing sites secretly record online activity. They look for personal data such as passwords, credit card information, billing info, and more that's often used to conduct identity theft. They can run for weeks without you even noticing it. So to combat this, Total AV is offering their Pro Suite antivirus for just $19.99 annually if you use my link below. It offers protection from the aforementioned scams as well as traditional malware and viruses. Total AV also comes with a VPN for private secure internet access. So check out the link in the description below to get Total AV for just $19.99 annually. And now let's talk about this Mac Mini. So the first thing that we gotta talk about, the elephant in the room, is the amount of disassembly that's required to actually perform this upgrade. Replacing the RAM, easy as cake. And even replacing a single hard drive, if you wanna just replace the one that comes by default, is pretty simple. You don't really have to disassemble the entire computer if you just wanna swap out the hard drive for an SSD. But if you wanna put in a dual drive kit, it's a, it's a complete gut. You have to completely gut this entire Mac Mini. On the other hand, if you wanted to do this exact same upgrade, putting in dual drives in a unibody MacBook Pro, it's literally just a couple of screws and it's nowhere near as involved as this process was. One caveat of this Mac Mini compared to a newer one is that we're limited to two and a half inch SATA drives. The 2014 Mac Mini features an upgradable NVMe drive and so do newer Retina MacBook Pros. However, the trade-off in that case is the 2014 Mac Mini as well as every single Retina MacBook that has ever been made, you can't upgrade the RAM, whereas we can here. The one area where this is really held back, we're limited to integrated graphics and because of this old Thunderbolt connection, even if you could get an eGPU on here, you're gonna lose so much graphics performance over that Thunderbolt connection that it's of arguable value. So to get an idea of how bad these graphics are, let's take a look here at Unigen Heaven. So as you might be able to tell, this is pretty much not usable at all. It's, it's barely, oh, <laughs> and it just crashed. So yeah, this is not a graphics machine. This thing has Intel HD Graphics 4000, the same integrated graphics that you'll find on the eight year old 13 inch unibody MacBook Pro from 2012. They're not gonna cut it. If you need to do anything demanding whatsoever, you're, you're not gonna buy one of these. You gotta buy a 2018, use an eGPU. That's really the only way to do that with a Mac Mini. But then again, these Mac Minis were never popular because of their graphics performance. People were buying this as basically a little quad-core box. The CPU performance is really where it's at. Instead of spending $1,800 for a unibody or $2,200 for a retina with this same processor, you could spend, I don't remember the exact price, you could spend this amount of money for this. It's a lot less expensive. However, while we're doing this test, this actually starts to bring up the first problem that I have with this from a value perspective. Here's the problem. The Mac Mini, the Quad Core 2012 Mac Mini, when it was released, was undoubtedly a great value. You were getting a shrunken down 15 inch MacBook Pro. You were getting a shrunken down, much more expensive Mac in this tiny little package. That was a compelling value. But the problem is because this thing was sort of the unicorn Mac mini, it was 
the only viable quad core Mac mini. It's still supported under Catalina. It's kind of like this golden child of the Mac mini lineup. So as a result of that, the prices are outrageous. People are still selling these things with 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD for $650, $700. It's not a good value at that price point. And that's the problem. As time has gone on, these Mac minis have not gone down in price very much, whereas the other Macs have. I talked about this a little when I was looking at the 2012 15 inch unibody MacBook Pro, how it was a little bit hard to get one of those for under $400 and with decent equipment and after you've upgraded them, you're starting to look at late 2013, mid 2014, 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro territory. So the value started to get a little bit questionable. This I think takes it to a new extreme because this one, which I ordered in the pretty basic configuration, the 2.3 gigahertz processor, four gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte hard drive, and it was $350. Personally, that's a little bit too expensive for me, but it's not outrageous. It's actually about what you would pay for a mid-2012 15-inch unibody, but that in itself is a bit of a problem because with a mid-2012 15-inch unibody, for pretty much the same price, you're gonna get you know a laptop, the screen, the keyboard, the trackpad, dedicated graphics. You're gonna get more value from a laptop than from this. So let's take a look at the score here. 1,230 points, pretty much exactly the same as a unibody 15 inch MacBook Pro. And I think it's important that we talk about the price. The one terabyte SSD, that's 130 bucks. 16 gigabytes of RAM, that's another $60. And it was another $30 to get the dual drive kit. So all in all, this computer was too expensive. I don't think that this is a good buy. Let's take a look at the Geekbench score. So 11,544 is significantly lower than you would get in a 2018 Mac Mini. So granted, the performance isn't that far off. It's about 13,000 for the 2018 Mac Mini and we're looking at 11,544, but uh, I don't know. I think this is too expensive to be perfectly honest. So the conclusion here is actually pretty similar to what we were talking about with the 15 inch unibody, which is once you start upgrading this thing and spending a lot of money on upgrades, it's not really worth the effort because you can get something newer and more powerful for about the same money. This, once you really upgrade it or pay for something that's already been upgraded, it's not really a good value. But if you can find a good price, upgrade it modestly, then I could definitely see there being a point to this. So weirdly, the moral of this story was that maxing this thing out with the maximum amount of RAM and dual drives actually kind of made the value worse. If I had just put in eight gigs of RAM and a half terabyte SSD, I think this would have been a better value than what I ended up with here today. So the moral of the story is upgrade modestly, don't spend too much, and keep an eye on your budget when you're looking at these older upgradable Macs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. Let me know down below what you think of the Unicorn Quad Core 2012 Mac Mini. Good deal, bad deal? Let me know all of that stuff down in the comments below. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please consider following me on Twitter, at Luke Miani, and I will see you all in the next video.